Hello everyone, I'm Aisar from Deepthi Karya and today we'll discuss about properties of synapse. Now, these are the properties. First of all, I'm enumerating and then we'll discuss one by one. So the properties are one-way conduction, synaptic delay, summation, occlusion, subliminal fringe effect, convergence, divergence, facilitation, fatigue, after discharge, reverberation, post-titanic potentiation, or you can say synaptic plasticity and effect of astrosis and hypoxia. I'll <clears throat> try to discuss all. Okay, starting with first one-way conduction. What is one-way conduction? Impulses are transmitted from presynaptic to postsynaptic neuron. We have already discussed in the topic of synapse that is impulses are transmitted from presynaptic to postsynaptic neuron in chemical synapses. So this is one-way conduction. Impulse will not pass in opposite direction. So this is also known as law of dynamic polarity. Dynamic means in one direction and polarity means polarization action potential passes. Now what is the cause of one way conduction because neurotransmitter is present in the synaptic vesicle that is in the presynaptic membrane and receptors are present on the postsynaptic membrane. So this is first property. Uh, and <clears throat> what is the importance of one-way conduction that is synapse act as a gateway and it determines the direction of the transmission of impulse impulse will transmitted will be transmitted in one direction only okay second is synaptic delay so synaptic delay delay means time required for the passage of impulse through the synapse some time is required for the passage of impulse okay that is synaptic delay what is normal synaptic delay that is about 0.5 millisecond when impulse passes through synapse okay causes of synaptic delay one that is time required for the release of neurotransmitter neurotransmitter release requires time then this neurotransmitter diffuses enters into the synaptic cleft it reaches to the post synaptic membrane it binds with the receptor and it uh, causes opening of sodium channel for the entry of sodium ions so all these events they require time so this is second property let us revise first is one way conduction second is synaptic delay okay then third is summation. Now what is summation? Very important thing is summation always takes place when the stimulus is sub-minimal. So this is one of the very important things. Sub-minimal or subliminal also it is known as subliminal. <coughs> so here summation, temporal and spatial, two types of summation are there. Here, what is temporal summation when presynaptic terminal, this is your presynaptic terminal, this is postsynaptic. So, when presynaptic terminal is stimulated repeatedly with the subminimal stimuli, this is 1, 2, 3, all are summated to produce response that is temporal summation. So, temporal summation is summation of time <clears throat> at one place, different time. Okay. Then second is spatial summation. It is summation of spot. Two spots at a time. So here when two presynaptic terminals are stimulated at the same time. This activity is summated to produce response. Very important thing for summation we require subliminal or subminimal stimulus. Subliminal or subminimal stimulus. Because if it is threshold or minimal stimulus then there is action potential and action potential cannot be summated so this is third property summation <clears throat> let us revise first is one way conduction second is synaptic delay third is summation fourth one that is occlusion now what is this occlusion property you can see here when we are stimulating one presynaptic terminal this one five postsynaptic terminals are stimulated okay when I am stimulating B, again 5 postsynaptic terminals are stimulated. So when I am stimulating A plus B together, then how many postsynaptic terminals are stimulated? 10, but it is less than 10. Why less than 10? Because you can see here, these 3 terminals are common for both. These 2, sorry, these 2 terminals are common. So here A plus B is equal to, not 10, is equal to 8. So this is occlusion property. So now what is occlusion property? Response of simultaneous stimulation of two presynaptic terminals is less than sum total of the response produced by separate stimulation of the same presynaptic terminals. That is occlusion property. Yes. Opposite to that is also true and that is subliminal fringe effect. I will explain. Suppose you can see when I am stimulating A presynaptic neuron. 
5 postsynaptic neurons are stimulated when i am stimulating b again 5 postsynaptic neurons are stimulated so when i am stimulating a plus b 10 postsynaptic neuron must be stimulated but here a plus b is equal to 12 more than 10 <clears throat> why is it so because when i am stimulating a 5 postsynaptic neurons have action potential and 2 have sub threshold stimulation Okay, so subliminal stimulation is given to this 2. And when B is stimulated, again subliminal stimulation is given this uh, given to this 2. So when I am stimulating A and B both, this subminimal stimuli are submitted and there is generation of action potential here. So this is subliminal fringe effect. So we have discussed 5 properties starting with first one-way conduction, delay, summation, occlusion, subliminal fringe effect. Okay, sixth property that is convergence. Convergence means when large number of presynaptic neurons, you can see here, they have synaptic connection with one postsynaptic neuron. Okay, so suppose you can see this some presynaptic neurons have excitatory neurotransmitters, some have inhibitory, some have excitatory like this. So all these effects are summated here. Okay, and what is the importance that this all summated effect is uh, in the form of activity that is found like uh, various neurons uh, like various tracks corticospinal tract reticulospinal tract rubrospinal tract they all converge on our ventral horn cell ventral horn cells okay so all the activities summited action is found that is convergence okay so what is convergence in information that is coming from large number of neurons that will converge and that decides the activity of the neuron. Opposite to the convergence is also true that is divergence. When one presynaptic neuron has synaptic connection with many. So you can see in single neuron we found convergence also like this and divergence also. And what is the role of divergence? Divergence is required for the magnification when I am stimulating only this one neuron. All these neurons are stimulated so that is for magnification of the activity. So, seven properties we have discussed, I am repeating, one-way conduction, synaptic delay, summation, occlusion, subliminal fringe effect, convergence, divergence. Then fatigue. Now, what is this fatigue? Fatigue means when I am stimulating this synapse repeatedly, okay. So, repeatedly when I am stimulating, repeated stimuli reduce responsiveness. My responsiveness decreases, decreases responsiveness. And it produces a state of reversible loss of activity means now this action potential will not be transmitted for few seconds. That is reversible. If I am taking rest for few minutes or few hours, then again I will be able to transmit the action potential. So this is fatigue. Okay. Repeated, I am just repeating the uh, this, uh, definition. Repeated stimuli reduce responsiveness and produces a state of reversible loss of activity that is known as fatigue. What is the cause of fatigue? Why there is fatigue? Because this neurotransmitters they get exhausted hmm? or neurotransmitters because repeatedly stimulus stimulation is there and repeatedly this there is exocytosis of the neurotransmitter so that results in the genesis of fatigue okay as well as other causes maybe calcium ions they are also inactivated uh, decrease in the number of neurotransmitter itself waste products are accumulated uh, oxygen uh, lack nutrient lack these all are the causes of fatigue okay then facilitation facilitation means you can see here when presynaptic uh, exon is stimulated here okay, with several consecutive stimuli. So, your postsynaptic response is larger than the previous one that is facilitation. Okay, Here you can see because of successive stimuli, large amount of neurotransmitter is secreted as well as sometimes facilitation that is by repetition when we are repetitive and when, when some other facilitator uh, terminal is stimulated along with that that releases other neurotransmitter serotonin that has additive effect it increases the release of neurotransmitter so this is facilitation we have completed nine properties starting with first one way conduction synaptic delay summation occlusion subliminal fringe effect convergence divergence fatigue facilitation then after discharge what is after discharge here you can see i'm giving one stimulus here one this one <clears throat> But the response is long lasting. Stimulus is for one millisecond, but the response is for few milliseconds, several or few or several milliseconds. Why? Because 
there are uh, multiple synapses in the circuit so this is known as after discharge single instantaneous input results in sustained output that is after discharge and for after discharge another property is important that is reverberation sometimes reverberation means you can see here the impulse will pass from presynaptic terminal to postsynaptic terminal okay and then coming back to presynaptic one you can see here this one this presynaptic here this is the presynaptic for this then again coming back to presynaptic to postsynaptic to presynaptic okay so this is reverberation impulse will pass from presynaptic to postsynaptic again back to presynaptic and that is prevented when there is genesis of fatigue so reverberation stops there then synaptic plasticity this is one of the very important property what do you mean by plasticity plastic means it can be molded so synaptic transmission can be mold sorry molded or changed we can change the synaptic transmission okay now uh, these are the examples one is post titanic potentiation then long term potentiation long term depression habituation and sensitization these are all the examples of synaptic plasticity we will discuss first is post titanic potentiation you can see here in this diagram suppose uh, we have given one stimulus and this is the response this much okay after that what we have to give is we have to give titanic stimuli titanic means multiple stimuli for example 100 stimuli per second are given for 2 seconds and then again same strength of stimulus is given so what happens after that the response would be increased here after titanic stimuli if i am giving the same strength of stimulus then the response is increased here for few contractions you can see here okay so what is the cause for this post titanic potentiation because when i have given titanic stimuli multiple stimuli <coughs> large number of calcium is released so this calcium is helpful for the uh, this uh, other stimulus to produce the response okay <coughs> then long term potentiation long term depression long term potentiation here when uh, we are giving post titanic uh, stimuli potentiation for long period of time then this effect will be lasting long so that is long term potentiation okay and here also there is release of calcium ion in the post synaptic membrane okay and that is seen in many part of the central nervous system mainly in the hippocampus okay long term depression that is opposite to long term potentiation that is slow stimulation of presynaptic neuron results in decrease in the calcium influx and decrease synaptic uh, synaptic transmission okay here when slowly we are continuously stimulating presynaptic uh, neuron so calcium in influx decreases and that is also seen in the hippocampus and cerebellum okay and this are the basis of learning and memory okay long term potentiation long term different uh, depression okay so they are also involved in the clinical depression and mental illness long term potentiation means suppose some uh, thing is uh, uh, given to you uh, for a long period of time then you are potentiating okay or or sometimes post titanic potentiation the example i can give you suppose uh, you have been taught something in the class then you are not attentive to the class then you have been given firing means titanic stimuli your teacher scolded you and then she taught the same thing you can remember easily why because this titanic stimuli firing stimuli were given and there is large amount of calcium ions are released and that results in potentiation okay so this is also long term if it is that is long term potentiation and long term depression other is habituation sensitization habituation means when any non injurious stimulus is given non injurious not producing injury then what happens person is habituated Okay, like for example, suppose somebody is putting the uh, his or her hand to your eye like this. Initially, you blink, but if it, the procedure is continued for a long period of time, then now you come to know that there is no harm in this. Then now there is no reflex, no synaptic transmission. Okay, then sensitization means if the stimulus is injurious, injurious, then response increases. For example, suppose you have touched somewhere in the speech and you got shocked. Yeah. Then now you feel before going there, you just withdraw your hand. That is sensitization. Same way, uh, in when you were a small kid, uh, before entering in the doctor's cabin, you started crying. Why? Because you knew that doctor will give injection. So that is uh, injurious stimulus. So when non-injurious stimulus is given, then 
synaptic transmission decreases but when the injurious stimulus is given synaptic transmission increases so these are all your synaptic plasticity okay so this properties we have discussed well i'll just uh, repeat the same one way conduction synaptic delay summation occlusion subliminal fringe effect convergence divergence fatigue facilitation hmm, that is facilitation is number 9 we have discussed then number 10 after discharge reverberation 11 12 that is synaptic plasticity 13 that is reciprocal inhibition reciprocal inhibition or innervation suppose you can see here afferent signal afferent uh, or sensory input that stimulates excitatory neuron in of one group and inhibitory neurons of other for example suppose knee reflex when we are elicitating we are giving a stroke here sensory fibers they are transmitted they cause extension of the limb how do they cause extension of the limb they cause stimulation in the extensor muscles quadriceps but inhibition of the flexion okay so you can say that there is reciprocal inhibition opposite group of muscles are inhibited okay and that is because of inhibitory interneurons here so this is reciprocal inhibition last property that is effect of acidosis and hypoxia now uh this neurons are affected by acidosis whenever there is change in the ph surrounding the interstitial fluid or uh, surrounding the fluid in the neuron when the ph increases from normal ph 7.4 plus or minus 0.2 that is normal ph okay mm. uh then uh, that is uh, sorry 7.38.02 7.38 to 7.42 that is normal ph when this ph increases neuronal excitability increases so that results in convulsions or seizures and when the ph decreases below the range that results in decreased neuronal activity that results in coma so acidosis is also one of the important factor hypoxia when brain blood flow decreases when brain undergoes hypoxia within 3 to 7 seconds it results in unconsciousness effect of certain drugs like caffeine theophylline theobromide which is which is present in coffee tea coca that also decreases threshold for excitation so neurons can easily be excited threshold for excitation decreases so neuronal excitability increases strychnine inhibit the action of inhibitory neurotransmitter so it increases excitability certain anesthetic drugs they increase neuronal membrane threshold for the excitation so they decrease neuronal excitability and synaptic transmission okay so this is all about properties of synapse thank you so much